don't buy an M2 Mac, buy an M1 MacBook Air instead. Well there, that was a simple video. I guess there's really nothing left to say. All right, I guess you want some reasoning because let's face it, there's a reason why Apple kept this M1 MacBook Air in the lineup and even though you have waited and waited and waited for a very long time for Apple to release the M2 MacBook Air, it may not be the best option for you with its higher price point and a surprising downgrade that might make the base model M1 MacBook Air the better value for most users. But no matter what Mac you buy, Trend Micro can help you out with keeping it optimized and running like new with Cleaner One Pro. Listen, buying a new Mac is exciting, but often it's tempting to get a base model for their low cost. And one of the negatives of going with a base model is after you transfer everything over from your old Mac, low storage can cause a big headache. While Cleaner One Pro helped me with that problem on my base model MacBook Air with its one-click scanning feature, which will quickly scan your Mac's disk for unnecessary files, duplicate files, system junk, or large files that are taking up big parts of your Mac storage. I also really like the duplicate image detect feature, which can automatically find duplicate image files and then delete them in just one click. And I find it easy to use with the visualize map, so you know exactly what files you are deleting and a visual representation of how much space that file is taking up on your drive. Cleaner One Pro also includes a great tool to manage your system's resources with a built-in Mac toolbar monitor, which tells me my Mac's current CPU usage, network usage, and even memory usage, and you can free up active memory with just one click, letting you maximize your current memory, which is super helpful on my 8 gigabyte base model. Check out Cleaner One Pro for yourself by clicking the link in the description below, and thank you to Trend Micro for sponsoring this video. All right, first let's acknowledge some strengths of the M2 Max before we talk about why you might not want to buy one because uh, let's face it here, we are fair and there's going to be a right choice between the M2 and the M1, but that's all down on personal preference and budget. Okay, mostly budget. Now the M2 Max are stronger than the M1 Max. They feature faster single core performance, faster multi-core performance, and are better suited for GPU tasks such as gaming. And the M2 chip itself even has a dedicated video decode and encode engine, which are a big help for video editors. They can be specced higher than the M1 Max 2, removing the 16 gigabyte limitation on those models, and they can now go up to 24 gigabytes of unified memory. Some of the M2 Max, <coughs> The M2 MacBook Air also feature a new redesign that packs in a bigger 13.6 inch display, 100 nits of extra screen brightness, better speakers, a better 1080p webcam, and a dedicated MagSafe charging port, which frees up the other two Thunderbolt ports for peripheral connections. It does all of this in a thinner overall body than the M1 MacBook Air 2, supposedly with the same battery life and even more power. Sounds good, right? Well. That's where it gets a little too good to be true because I would say the biggest negative with buying this M2 MacBook Air is the price point. Let's face it, $1,200 for the M2 MacBook Air, it's a big price increase. Now I'm not saying it's not worth it. The new redesign looks great. It does look like it's worth it, but I'm also not disputing that this is a pretty expensive laptop. This is a 20% price increase over the tried and true M1 MacBook Air. And while the allure of the modern design is going to try and grab you, in reality, the difference between both of these laptops in the form of portability is not a major difference. For example, the M1 MacBook Air is just 0.1 pounds heavier than the M2 Air, which means a negligible amount of weight difference when carrying it around or lugging it in your bag. The M1 Air is also technically thinner at its thinnest point, thanks to the iconic wedge-shaped design. And in terms of volume, the M1 MacBook Air is actually slightly smaller than the M2 MacBook Air and will take up slightly less vertical space when laid out on a table. Even the bigger display isn't that big of an upgrade when you think about it. Sure, 0.3 inches vertically can add some extra size to the display, but really it's not a drastic difference over the M1 Air's 13.3 inch display. And while I much prefer the new look of the M2 Air with its reduced bezels, notch and all, it's not going to be a night and day difference when using these laptops. Let's also address the value proposition of the base model of these laptops and 
an unfortunate downgrade on the lower end base model M2 MacBook Air, because if you pick between both base models with the 256 gigabytes of storage, the M1 MacBook Air actually has a faster storage speed than the M2 model with about double the disk speed. Listen, I think that I am a pretty reasonable person. Right? You agree with that? I'm a pretty reasonable person. But I don't like to see regressions in areas of tech. But I can see why Apple is using one 256 gigabyte drive over two individual 128 gigabyte drives. I'm sure this has to do with making the supply chain more efficient by reusing parts and getting rid of unnecessary parts. However, I am also pro-consumer and a regression in this area is unfortunate, especially when the speeds on the older model were faster. Now, will you notice this speed decrease? Well, it really depends on how you use your laptop, but if you're not using it for really fast data transfer speeds or maybe for professional settings, for example, if you have a lot of apps open and you go beyond the eight gigabytes of unified memory, well, your MacBook is going to have to find somewhere to store that memory. It does this by using your storage as virtual memory and swaps between these pools of memory. The problem is the unified memory is much faster than the storage. So if you're constantly swapping this memory, especially on a slower drive, you may have a slight pause or stutter as your Mac manages this. Another reason you'll want to order the M1 Air is because the power differences between M1 and M2 aren't night and day. For short bursts, you may notice an increase in speed for the M2. For example, opening apps on my M2 MacBook Pro was slightly faster thanks to the increased single core performance, but it was a small difference. That is to say that the M1 chip is still really, really powerful for this type of computer, and the M1 MacBook Air is still a really great performer. And if you're worried about the M2 chip eclipsing the M1 MacBook Air, it's just not going to happen. Both of these laptops are going to be speedy. Now, the M1 also retains what I think are the most important features on this laptop, battery life and efficiency. The M1 MacBook Air has the same outstanding 18 hours of battery life rating as the M2 MacBook Air, and they're both in fanless packages that won't spin up the fan because they don't have one. So these computers cannot make a sound at all. And best of all, because they are so energy efficient with the M1 chip especially, these things don't really even get hot even when you're pushing them with more performative workloads. The M1 changed the game when it came to what I expect out of a laptop for battery life and efficiency, and it will be a night and day difference if you're coming from an older Intel MacBook. All right, the last reason you should pick the M1 Air over this new M2 MacBook Air is, well, we kind of talked about it at the start of the video, right? Price. Let's face it, if both of these laptops were the same amount of money, nothing I said above would influence your decision to purchase the M1 Air over the M2 Air. And quite frankly, you'd be a fool to if they were the same price. You get a lot of nice upgrades going to the M2 MacBook Air, and obviously it has advantages over the M1 laptop. However, a 20% increase in price is quite costly. The MacBook Air is Apple's entry-level laptop, and users that don't want to spend a bunch of money on a laptop are going to have a hard time picking that base model M2 Air. So even though that M2 Air might be tempting, it might not be the best choice for your personal financial situation. Even if you do scrounge up $1,200 to get that M2 MacBook Air, you could also use the extra money you might have spent on that base model to put even more money into the base model M1 MacBook Air. You could spend that extra $200 on either upgrades for storage or memory, and that could be a better long-term fit for you overall than just buying the base model M2 MacBook Air. And while you can throw a few upgrades into the M1 MacBook Air and it doesn't get overly expensive, you can't say the same about the M2 MacBook Air. You start putting some upgrades into the M2 Air, and the more you add on, the more the price really starts to add on, and it makes it a laptop that gets up to MacBook Pro pricing territory pretty easy with just a few upgrades. Furthermore, savvy shoppers can save money on the M1 MacBook Air. It is frequently discounted on third-party sites like Amazon, sometimes as low as just $850. And if it can't be found there, if you're willing to buy a refurbished M1 MacBook Air like I did for this video up here, shameless plug. Well, you can uh, pick up what is pretty much exactly a new MacBook Air in a different box for that same lower $849 price point. And for those reasons, I think in 2022, if the M2 MacBook Air is too expensive for you, well, then I highly recommend picking up the M1 Air, and I think you're going to be blown away at just how capable it is if you're coming from an older computer, which I assume you would, why would you upgrade from an M1 MacBook Air to an M1 MacBook, that wouldn't make sense.
that wouldn't make that does not compute. All right, everyone. Those are my reasons for why you should pick up an M1 MacBook Air. Uh, hopefully you found this video helpful. And uh, like we talked about in the last video on the M2 Air, I did a loyalty test and a lot of you passed with flying colors. So let's keep the streak alive. If you made it this far, you know, write, uh, write Gabagool in the comments below. If you don't know what Gabagool is, uh, what's the matter with you? Gabagool and fresh mutts go together like peanut butter and jelly. Actually, now I'm hungry. So, so thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Take care, everyone. I'm getting myself a sandwich.